Are we doing well today? Let's have a confession and then we'll move on from here. Uh, give us that confession quickly if you can, you guys in the media. All right, three, four. Because of his kingdom, I let go of past traditions and failures that I've held until today. I embrace God's principles, new revelation, and a new mindset. So help me God. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit in every aspect of my life to live victoriously through God's new covenant. I am an adversity to sin, sickness, poverty, and the wiles of the enemy. I am established and I am rooted in his purpose for my life, and I am transforming my generation. So help me God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And you all say it? Amen. Amen. You want to give the Lord a good hand? Amen, amen, and amen. We want to invite those who are watching us online, those who've joined us either via YouTube or Facebook. Come on, guys, in the sanctuary, would you just appreciate guys who are following us online? Amen and amen. We are, we are in a season of reflection. Uh, last Sunday when we talked, we talked about us thinking about the things that God has done for us and who he's been to us. As this year comes to an end, we reflect on those great things. And you encouraged us and said we need to be thankful and grateful for the things that God has done. How many of you know that there's something you can be grateful for? Let me see your hand. There's something you can be grateful for and thank God for? Oh, that's, that's wonderful. So that's what we want to do today. Look at scripture and just challenge us that let's keep on living a life of thanksgiving and being grateful to God. And one of the highlights, like we said uh, last Sunday, uh, for every time when we get into this season is when we give a thanksgiving offering. Uh, and a thanksgiving offering is really to, to sow a seed, especially thanking God for what he's done in the past and even sowing it into the future. Uh, I want you to turn around to about two or three people. We talked about thanksgiving. And just share one or two things that you're thankful for. Just one or two things. Just turn around. Just turn around. Two to three people. Uh, behind your mask. Make sure it's behind your mask. What is that that you're thankful for? What is that that you're thankful for? Behind your mask. Come on, I'm giving you a minute to do that. Make sure at least one or two things. You guys lifted up your hands and said there's something that you're thankful for. Those watching us online, please just write in that chat. Write in the chat and say, I'm thanking God for good health. I'm thanking God for provision. I'm thanking God that my kids have been protected. I'm thanking God for my family or my relationship. Uh, those who are watching online, go ahead and write that in the chat. That which you're thanking God for. Did you, did, did you share? Did you share? Uh, for soccer lovers like me, I'm not so sure we have much to thank God for. In fact, I walked in here and I saw somebody came into the sanctuary with a Liverpool jersey. I almost asked the security, how did you allow this gentleman? <laughs> eh? How did you allow this gentleman to come through the gates with a Liverpool jersey? But God, God has restrained me. <laughs> Earth can be hard, all right? Uh, but, but we are better off than that other like team, eh? Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, you may be seated. Verse 1 to 5. I'll give you a few scriptures. One is Psalm 103, and then we'll be looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 12. And really, Hebrews chapter 12 will, uh, will be the backdrop of what you want to share today. But Psalm 103, just to, to get into that mood and for you to see David... Uh, you know, making an intention and deliberately saying, I'm going to thank God because of his loving kindness. Psalm 103 says what? Let's read that together. Three, four. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Verse two. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Now that you know it, can we read it one more time? Let's start with the first verse, three, four. 
Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. What does number two say? Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Anyone who said earlier there are benefits you can thank God for, that's David encouraging you that do not forget that which God has done. Because sometimes it's very easy for us to think about that which has not yet been done, and we forget to thank him for that which has been done. Verse 3 says what? Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. How many of us here have been forgiven of their sins? You're saying, uh, I, I was a sinner, God forgive me and he saved me. Okay, let me ask this one, one more time. How many of us can say there's a time I was sick and God healed me? God touched me. You know what the psalmist is telling us? We've got to praise God with all our souls when we remember that. We've got to, you know, go into his presence and thank him for forgiving our sins, making us into a new creation, healing us of that sickness and disease when the enemy would have brought us down, but God stood on our behalf and made sure that he asked Jehovah Rapha upon us and we were healed. What about verse number four? What does it say? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Some of us, there are some pits that God has delivered us from. There are things that were thrown our way, but God was able to rescue us. And that's why in this season of reflection, as this year comes to an end, we must make sure that we thank him. Thank him for those great things that is done on our behalf. Lastly, verse 5 says what? Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an ego. Friends, all I'm trying to tell us is that you and I have got every reason to thank God. You and I have got every reason to show gratitude to God because of the things that he's done and who he's been to us. You see, David in that scripture remembers all the things that God had done for him and he bursts out in praise and thanksgiving. And I'm praying it will not just be a one-time event, but in this season, every other morning when you wake up, you'll be telling God, thank you for giving me life. Thank you, you saw me through the night. Thank you for giving me today. Today is better than yesterday. You become like David of old, and you thank him. You see, friends, it's not just in the Old Testament where we are encouraged to thank God or to show a life or to live a life of gratitude, but even in the New Testament, Paul admonishes us, and he says, we've got to show gratitude. We've got to thank God for the stuff that he's done to us. And in 2 uh, Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 3, verse 1 to 5, if you could give us that to us very quickly, 2 Timothy uh, 3, verse 1 to 5. Let's see 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5. What does it say? Let's read it together, church, with all the energy that we have, 3, 4. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Just stop there. Don't even continue. People will be what? Ungrateful in the last times. One of the signs that in the last days when you, is when you come across people who are grateful, unholy, rude, don't even appreciate. That's what Paul is trying to point us to. That when you see these things, then you realize, man, we are in the last times. But Paul is telling us, you and I cannot afford to be like that. We must be what? We must be grateful. Look at that neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you must be grateful. Tell them again, you must be grateful. Let's look at Hebrews 12 verse 28. And I'm picking it from the English Standard Version. Hebrews 12 verse 28. Hebrews 12, verse 28. Hebrews 12, 28. What does it say? Again, with all the energy that you have, let's read it 3, 4. Therefore, let us be grateful. Stop there. Let's read that phrase one more time. With all the punch we can. 3, 4. Therefore, let us be grateful. Again, we see it in Scripture. God is telling us. It's so emphatic. The way he brings it out, you realize it is not optional for you and I who are born again. God is telling us, let us do what? Let us be grateful. Now, let's read the entire scripture together. Three, four. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Therefore, let us be grateful. The right of Hebrews 
are encouragers. Let us be grateful because we've, we've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And as a response to that, that's why we come into the house of God, lift up our hands and worship him in reverence. And not just in the house of God. We do that out throughout the week that we will worship him in reverence and in awe because we are grateful for him giving us a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I wanted to, uh, to flash back 2020 uh, from March 2020 all the way to, uh, to November, or even this entire year, 2021. How many of you know we've lived through times that have been so shakable? How many of you know that? I mean, stuff around us has been shaken. Not, not just our health. Our businesses have been shaken. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us lost loved ones. Some of us have gone through a very, you know, very difficult patch in their life. I mean, things have been shaken. In fact, when you read uh, the verse prayer to that, it uh, says everything that is shakable will be done what? Will be shaken. And we see things around us have been shaken. Some of you would even say, you know what? I felt uh, from March 2020 all the way to this time that even the very ground I was standing on was giving in under my feet. But listen to what the writer says. The reason why you and I must be grateful is because all that was around us could have been shaken. But God has given us a kingdom that is not shakable. And that's why we are holding on to that thing that God has given to us, the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken either by COVID-19, cannot be shaken by losing a job, cannot be shaken by the enemy throwing sickness and disease your way, cannot be shaken by you, uh, you know, no, not having what you desired to have, cannot be shaken by some of the things that have happened around you either in your business. You see, you... Those of us who are born again are different. Though we live in this world, go through everything that everybody else goes through, we are different from everybody in the world because of the kingdom that we've been given. So we will go through joblessness, but we are standing. Why? Because we are standing on a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You look at yourself. There are people that you know who are not born again, who, didn't, who don't even have a job, like in the same situation that you are in. But you know what? They are worse off, you know? There are people who lost their minds because they went through the same things that you've gone through, but you're standing. You know why? You're standing on a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I said you're standing on a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's what you're standing on. There are people who are laid off together with you in that company you're in. And right now, some of them are going through difficult patches in life. They're losing their minds, but look at you. Look at you. Look at you. There are those who lost, you lost businesses together at the same time, but look at you, look at you. It is because you're standing on a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's why we've got to be grateful to God and show him thanks for giving us that kingdom that cannot be shaken. You see, the writer is encouraging us that you know what, when everything around us is being shaken, we've got to hold on to that which God has given to us. We've got to hold on and, and to, 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 to the word that God has thrown our way. We've got to build our lives, not on the things that we have or the things that are around us. We build our lives on the kingdom of God. When you do that, you become like that believer in Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. You are like planted by the riverside, and whatever you touch does prosper. Are you hearing me, church? Are you together with me? That's why in this season, we must be grateful. I want to, to, uh, to base my message before bringing it to an end just on three things. I think three or four things. Number one, I want us to define what thanksgiving or gratitude is. Then number two, I want us to contrast a spirit of thankfulness and thanklessness, if there's a word like that, or gratitude and ingratitude. And, 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 and just see what impact does gratitude have on your life and what impact does ingratitude have on your life? And then number three, we'll be looking at the benefits of being gratitude or showing gratitude. And then lastly, we'll be asking ourselves, why, why is it important for us to show gratitude? Why is it important for us uh, to be thankful to God? Is that a good plan? All right. So what is gratitude? Why is thanksgiving so important? You see, gratitude is 
a feeling or an emotion of being grateful or thankful. I know English teachers in the house will tell me, do not define a word using the same word, but that's okay. Uh, this is church today. That's, that's okay. Gratitude is a feeling or an emotion of being grateful or thankful. It is a feeling or an emotion. Of the gates, one of the things that you see there is that uh, the emphasis there is that it is an internal thing. It is something that you feel inside. You wake up in the morning and you realize either somebody did something, said something, or God did something to you, and inside you, you're bubbling with thankfulness. You have that emotion of feeling that says, God, thank you, either for healing me, or you provided yesterday, or you just got that call today in the morning, or that text that is answering the question that you're asking, and all of a sudden, you have this feeling that is bubbling inside of you that says, I need to say thank you. So it's a feeling or an emotion that, uh, uh, that shows a heart of gratefulness, or thankfulness. But you see, though it is an internal, an inward thing, it must be expressed externally. And that's why if somebody does something good to you, you will either pick that call and call them and tell them, thank you. You're expressing it externally. And that's why if God has been so good to you, you can't just hold it in yourself and you say, oh, me and my spirit, I know I am thankful. That is not enough. You've got to show it. You've got to act it out. And how do we act it out? That's why we lift up our hands and praise him. That's why we take an offering and put it on the altar and say we are doing this. Not so much because of what is inside or based on the amount of money that is. No, no, no. It's to show our heart of gratitude. To show a heart of thanksgiving. We are expressing what we are feeling inside externally. If you're together with me, say amen. Come on, say amen. amen. So it's, a, it's an internal feeling, but it must be expressed externally. What's the difference between being thankful and being thankless? What are some of the things that come about when you show gratitude or you show ingratitude? Number one, gratitude brings out optimism in your heart and in your life. You believe tomorrow will be better. If God did it today, I know he can do it tomorrow. If he provided today, I can rest assured that even tomorrow he will do what? He will provide. It, it, it brings out a bathes optimism in your heart. Uh, on the flip side, if you're thankless and you don't show gratitude, in, you're only showing ingratitude, it brings out pessimism. So you're always thinking, ah, tomorrow will be worse. You don't see anything good. You know, everything around you is bad. You don't, you, 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 you don't see some good things even in the midst of the tough moments that you're going through. So maybe from uh, March last year up to this time, all you're doing is complaining. Saying, oh, I wish, oh, this COVID, oh, if it were not for so-and-so, maybe this would not have happened. So you live a life of complaining. All that happens, it impacts on you so badly that you become so pessimistic, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me? So tomorrow becomes so tough because you're like, if today things didn't work out, tomorrow things may not work out. And it's because you're not picking the few things that God is doing in your life for you to bring out uh, optimism. Number two, gratitude attracts people your way. Nobody wants to be around people who are complaining every other time. I mean, I don't want you to lift up your hands, but you know one or two people either in that office or either in that home or in that family or in that neighborhood, when you meet them, you know you'll be so drained. Because they'll be complaining about everything. They complain about the weather. You know? Or it has not rained. And when it rains, why did it? Why did it rain? Complaining about everything. I mean, if you're that kind of a person, you repel other people from coming around you. People will run away from you because they're wondering, oh goodness, I can't stand you. This person is so draining. On the flip side, ingratitude, like I said, repels people. Uh, I heard of a story uh, of a blind boy who was sitting on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. And you know, anytime you, uh, you see uh, beggars with the hats, all they're saying, we want you to put some money inside. And this 
a young boy who's blind and is a beggar held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. A big sign. I think either it was a manila paper written so well, I am blind, do what? Please help. So this guy who tells this story says, I noticed there were only a few coins in the hat as I was passing by. There looks like people were just taking some spare change and throwing it uh, throwing into that hat and walking around, uh, walking away very quickly. But then a man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them in the hat. And then he noticed the sign. So he picks the sign, turns it around, and writes something different on that manila paper. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand. The boy doesn't even know who this is. Just like somebody has you know, snatch this sign from him, turns it around, scribbles some things very quickly, puts it in the hands of the boy. And everyone who was walking now is seeing something new. He's seeing new words. No longer I am blind, so help is something totally different. Soon, the blind boy notices that the heart begins to fill up with money and coins. A lot more people were passing by and throwing money to the blind boy. That afternoon, at the man who wrote that new sign on that paper, passes by again, uh, you know, to see how things are. And the boy recognizes his footsteps and asks, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? And the guy says, yes. And then he asks him, what did you write? And the man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. I said you're blind, but in a totally different way. You know what the man wrote? He wrote on that sign, on the other side of the paper, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Say the same thing, but in a different way. But how different? Now the boy is ex you know, exhibiting a sign that says, I am happy, I am thankful, I'm, I, I'm, I'm showing gratitude for a beautiful day, though I am not able to do what? To see it. Could be that's why so many people, when they saw that, they were so moved by that positive message and they started throwing coins inside uh, uh, that heart. Gratitude attracts people around you. You need to ask yourself, if there are so many people running away from me, is it because I'm a complainer, I'm a murmurer? Do I show gratitude? Gratitude not only attracts people, but it makes you humble. It makes you humble. You realize that the things that I have, I didn't work for them. It is God who's given to me. You become humble. Oh, I have this property. I have this little money maybe in my account. I have this work going on while my business is flourishing. You realize it's not about me. It's not because I'm, I'm the most cleverest person around. It's not because I'm the most connected man around. No, it's because of God. You become humble. So you ascribe everything to him and not to you. But on the flip side, people who are not thankful are uh, exhibit pride. They think, I have this because I wake up very early in the morning at four o'clock to go to work. I have this because I went to university, did my degree, my master's, now I have my PhD. It is my education that has given this to me, not realizing it is God who's done that. I have this because I'm hardworking, I'm clever, I have the wits of a businessman or a woman. No, no, no. It is God who's given to you. Gratitude makes you happy. People who Show people who are thankful, I mean, are happy. But people who are not thankful because they keep on complaining will always be unhappy. And being thankful is medicinal. It will heal you. I mean, it brings life into your system. But being thankless is poisonous. It will poison you. And unfortunately, it becomes contagious. If people hang around you so long, they start, being, start complaining like you do. Gratitude would attract people to you. Let's look at the benefit of being thankful or showing gratitude as we uh, move towards uh, the end of this. What are some of the benefits of being thankful or showing gratitude? Now, this is not for me. Uh, there are people who've done some research out there. These are counseling psychologists who've done some uh, very scientific, very spot on research out there taking a sample of people and I've come up with some of these results saying there are things that happens to you if you're a person who learns how to be thankful. And I'll give that to you. 
the number one thing they said, when you're gratitude, when you show gratitude, or when you're a thankful person, your physical health is impacted in a positive way. They say thankful people, what happens? There's faster recovery from heart problems, reduced risk of mortality, improved cancer survival rate. And you find this UCLA, Gallup polls have all come with this, saying, you know what? When you're thankful, even your life, even your health improves. But if you're gripey, always murmuring and complaining, even affect your health system. Not only does it impact positively your physical health, it also impacts positively your relational health. It improves your relationships. You're always eager and ready to say thank you in that home when somebody does something good. And, and when you do that either to your spouse or to your child or to your parents, it brings, it, it, it brings some shining brightness in that relationship in that home. What about somebody in the house? Can you imagine doing something for somebody in the house? It could be your child or your spouse, and they never say thank you. Your relationship is affected. In fact, one of the things that would hit you is be like, what's wrong with this man? What's wrong with this woman? doesn't matter what I do. They will never say what? Thank you. But if you are thankful, it improves your relational health. Not only does it improve your relational health, it, 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 it produces even more positive action in the sense that when you tell somebody thank you, you motivate them to do something better even next time. So if what they did today, if what your spouse did to you today or your child or your parent did to you today and you say, thankful, you say thank you and you show gratitude, they'll be motivated to do even more tomorrow. It improves relational health. Not only does it improve or impact positively on your relational health, it impacts also on your mental health. And you're going through some very tough times at this period because of mental issues. It gives you greater happiness, I told you. People who are thankful have always something to be happy about. They see the bright side of things, not, so, not only the bad side of things. It increases satisfaction and contentment. You're always saying, God, thank you for giving me this house. As much as my dream house is that one, but I'm thankful for this house. You don't compare yourself. You visit your neighbors and you see new seats. You don't go home and you start quarreling and fighting. No, no, you're like, God, those are good seats, but I thank you for what you've given me at this point. This is what you've given to me, and I thank you. I am content. I know there are greater things in you, but I'm content. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. You see, sometimes when you're not grateful, you'll compare yourself. How did they dress today? What kind of car are they driving? Where do they live? Where do their children go to school? Man, then you get into this very fast lane of comparing yourself and you burn your fingers. But you know, if you're grateful, you'll be content and happy. You'll be telling God, I may be having one or two or three dresses, but God, thank you. You are, you are my provider. God, I may not be having what they have, but thank you for what you've given me at this time. I am content. I am content. Gratitude helps and impacts positively on mental health. Gratitude ensures you go through lower stress moments. There are some of us who are so stressed. So stressed. You know? What will I put on? Will they like my dress? Will I be pleasing to them? Will I, I mean, how will they lower stress when you're content with who you are? That's, those are some of the benefits of gratitude. Lastly, why should we show gratitude? Why should we show gratitude? Number one, thanksgiving, being thankful or showing gratitude is the will of God, is the will of God. God's desire is that we may live a life of thanksgiving. And it doesn't give us an option. He says, you, you're a believer, you can't be a complainer, you can't be a mamara, always being negative, always seeing the bad sides of things, you can't do that. God's will is that you should always be thankful for the things that he has done. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7 uh, the CV version says, you have accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. How many of us have accepted Christ as their Lord? How many of us? You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord. Now keep following on him 
verse 7, plant your roots in Christ and let him be the foundation of your life. Be strong in your faith just as you are taught. And be what? Come on, guys, shout it loud. And be what? And be grateful. Be grateful. First Thessalonians 5.18 says this. Come on, read that together with me, 3, 4. As loud as you can, 3, 4. Give thanks in all circumstances. For what? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, note what he says. It doesn't say, it doesn't say be thankful for all circumstances. He says be thankful in all circumstances. So I'm not asking you, uh, the right of, 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 of fast Thessalonians doesn't say that be thankful for sickness, for poverty, for mental breakdown, for the difficult things that are happening. No, no, he's saying you find yourself in a difficult situation. Even in that situation, do what? Be thankful. Be thankful. Show gratitude. God, thank you. Though I may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, God, I know thou art with me. You are together with me. Thank you because I know you're there with me. I may not know what tomorrow holds, but thank you because, God, you're together with me. God, things may not be so good, but I'm thankful. You see, it's very easy to be thankful for the good things or God has provided. I wanted this and he gave that to me. But it is maturity for you to be able to be thankful in a difficult situation. A mature believer is thankful even in difficult situations. Number two, thanksgiving keeps your focus on the right things. It keeps your focus on the right things. You see, many of us focus on the wrong things. And unfortunately, when we focus on the wrong things, we magnify them. That's what we do. So I'm focusing on, I don't have a job. Not looking at, could there be opportunities that God is giving or bringing my way? So you magnify the joblessness, and all of a sudden, it's a giant in front of you, and it's bringing you down. Thanksgiving will help you to focus. Not so much on what hasn't been done or what has gone wrong. You start focusing on the good things that God has done. We used to sing a song many years back, count your blessing, name them one by one. Anyone who sang that song? Count your blessing, name them one by one? And, and I'll challenge you to do that. You, you, you're finding yourself in a tough moment. You're saying, I came to church. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm wondering whether there's anything to be thankful for. I want you to take a piece of paper and start counting your blessings. Name them one by one. He woke me up today. He gave me a good night. I have good health. And I'm sure there's so many you can write. He's given me a family. I have children around me. You know, I'm sure you can write so many. Count your blessing. Name them one by one. Don't just focus. Oh, COVID happened. The business went down. COVID happened. I've not been able to uh, maintain the kind of lifestyle I used to. Start counting your blessings. Name them one by one and start magnifying the good things that God has done to you. One of the things that you realize is happening is that the energy or the strength on the life, on the bad things, will start going down and you'll have something to thank God. Are you together with me, church? Are you together with me? You become like David in Psalm 136. David uh, reminds the children of Israel, think about the things that you went through, especially when you're coming from uh, the land of Egypt. Think about the goodness of the Lord. And that famous scripture in Psalm 136, where he says, give thanks to the Lord or praise the Lord for his mercies does what? And you was forever. To him, he was like, you know what? I may be in difficulty, but I know one thing, the love of God endures forever. And that's what I will focus on. I, I, I may be going through some physical challenges, health challenges, but I know the masses of God, the love of God endures forever. That's what I will focus on. I may not have money in my pocket, but I know the love of God does what? Endures forever. I may be going through a rough patch, but I know the love of God endures forever. And that's why he kept on saying it over and over again. And I'll tell you, as a medicine or something that will help you move on, uh, you know, navigate through some difficult moment, maybe it's time for you to take Psalm 136 and sing it to yourself until it sinks in. Give thanks to the Lord for his mercies endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercies endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for, 
for his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. You've got to learn to do that every other morning, every other day when the enemy reminds you of the difficult things that you're going through. Remind him of Psalm 136. The masses of God endures forever. If you're hearing me, child, say amen. amen. Come on, shout amen. amen. Thanksgiving brings contentment, like I said. Philippians 4, 11 to 13, what does that scripture say? It says this, I am not saying this because I'm in need. That is Paul talking. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether we are fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Can you imagine somebody who says, I've been shipwrecked, I don't have food, uh, things are not working out, but I have a positive, I have a thankful message. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you know where he was writing this letter? He was in jail confined with chains. But the man says, God, I'm so thankful because in you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's keep on moving. Thanksgiving will posture your heart in the right direction. It will posture your heart in the right direction. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Give me the living Bible. What does it say? Verse 7 says, what are you so puffed up about? What do you have that God hasn't given you? And if you, all you have is from God, why act as though you are so great and as though you have accomplished something on your own? Let's, let, let's be upstanding and read this scripture to ourselves. That scripture sinks in and, 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 and brings, brings in that seriousness of that message at the way I would want it to be. Let's stand together. Just read that scripture one more time as loud as you can. Verse 7, what does it say? What do you have that God hasn't given you? Pause it there. You think about it. Just think about it for a second. Why would you be so proud? Why would you be so puffed up? What do you have that God hasn't given you? How does he finish it? Read it together with me. And if all you have is from God... Why act as though you are so great and as though you have accomplished something on your own? Gratitude or thankfulness brings contentment, postures your heart. It makes sure that your heart is in the right place. You understand there's nothing that I have that I've accomplished by my own strength. And that's when it comes to December 5th, you won't struggle. You'll be like, this is what has given, God has given me. I'll take a portion of that and sow it into the kingdom. I'm just but a steward. You'll be saying, ah, all this, why don't I, why, why take all this to church? No, 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 no. You'll be like, even what I have, it is God who's given me. And if God has given me this, I know he can give me what? He can give me more so I can share. I can give out as a sacrificial offering, as a thanksgiving offering. To God for that which he has given me. Friends, you realize that there is nothing you have accomplished by yourself. And that keeps you humble. The money, the job, the business, the family, all those things that are going on so well. Everything that you have, there is nothing that you've worked for. All of it has been given to you by God. And that's why in this season, I want to encourage you. Would you take some time and be thankful? The past may not have been what you wanted, but I want to tell you, it would, it would have been worse. Why it not for God? Why it not for God? Things would have been difficult. Why it not for God? I don't know if you have a piece of paper or you have a phone or you have something. Uh, as we bring this to a close, I just want you to write three things. Just three things. Not about your neighbor, not about your spouse. Just write three things and say, God, these three things I am thankful for in the year 2021. These three things. Take a piece of paper, take a phone as we bring this to a close. These three things I am thankful for. These three things. I know there are many. The list is big. 
Some of you could be having 5, 10, 15, 20. But make sure you write it down. These three things I am thankful for. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for providing school fees when I didn't know where it would come from. Thank you, you gave me a house. Thank you, you gave me rent. Thank you, God, you provided food. Thank you, you healed my parents or you rescued my child. Three things. And you're saying, God, I am thankful for this. I am thankful for this. You can expand that list when you go home. But just write it down. God, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. Three things that you're thankful for. Three things that you're thankful for. Have you made a list? Have you written something down that you're thankful for? Now you put that paper down, put that phone, that tablet down, put that book down. I want you to lift up your hands to God. I just want you to lift up your hands to God for a minute. And just thank him. Come on, raise your voice and thank him. Raise your voice and thank him. Raise your voice. Raise your voice and thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for provision. Thank him. Thank him for your spouse. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your parents. Thank him. Thank him that in spite of you not having a job in this season, he's been your provider. He's been your source. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him that when you were sick, he healed you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him that he raised you up from that hospital bed. Thank him. Thank him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Raise your voice and thank him. Raise your voice and thank him. Thank him. Thank him for his loving kindness, his mercies, and you us forever. Thank him for his protection. If the enemy would have been given his way, he would have finished you by now. But God, but God, but God who's rich in mercies, God who's rich in mercies, preserved you, protected you. You could have had a mental breakdown because of the things that you went through. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. Come on, thank him. Thank him. One more minute. Thank him. Raise your voice and thank him. Thank him. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you're wonderful and mighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for proving yourself strong on our behalf. When the enemy would have brought us down, were we not for the Lord? If the Lord has not, had not been on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us alive. The rivers would have consumed us. The fires would have consumed us. But the Lord was on our side. Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. If you had not been on our side, my God, the story would have been different. Our enemies would have consumed us alive. My God, the waters would have drowned us. The fires would have burnt us. But God, they laid us near even before us. But by your power and your ability, we have escaped. We have escaped, God. We say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you, Lord. 